is no shadow that has ever overcome your light and there is no rival that could ever stand against your might you've always been with us Every battle you've already won, oh, we've already won. There is no weapon that has ever left a mark on you. And there is no army with the power to conquer truth. You've always been with us.
There's a grace when the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in And when I look at the space between Where I used to be and this reckoning
can't go back to the beginning can't control what tomorrow will bring but I know here in the middle is the place where you promised to be I'm not enough unless you come will you meet me here again All I want is all you are Will you meet me here again? As I walk
wasn't praise and worship phenomenal? Oh, if you experienced God's presence, why don't you put some praise hands up? Um, if you enjoyed that, why don't you um, put some clapping hands there? Um, I love our praise and worship together. And I love it when you guys participate in the chat. Um, it almost feels like we're actually all together. But we're going to have an opportunity now to take up the tithes and the offerings. And we know that this is one of the most practical ways that we get to worship God. But um, I want to encourage you guys this morning. It's almost time to get our salaries. And when we get our salaries, we are put in a very unique position. It happens once a month. We're put in a position where we can make a choice to put God first. And to say, I'm gonna, he gave me everything. Everything I have comes from him. And I'm going to bring my 10% back. And I'm going to pay my tithes to him. But I'm not going to pay it from what's left over. I'm going to pay it first in faith. Before I pay my bond. Before I pay my car. Because he comes first. And you know, Rick Warren makes this, um, yeah, this crazy statement, which was such a revelation for me. He says, you know, Abel is the first name mentioned in the biblical hall of fame. Okay, so there's a part in the Bible where they mention all the heroes of the faith. So a lot of you might even be asking, who on earth is Abel? Remember Cain and Abel, they were Adam and Eve's children. But the thing that Abel did that impressed God so much was he brought an offering in faith that cost him something. He bought his first lamb to God. I want to read this piece of scripture to you guys. It's Hebrews 11 verse 4 and it says, By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. Abel's not listed in the Hall of Fame for parting the Red Sea like Moses or for sacrificing his son like Abraham. He is listed in the Hall of Fame because he put God first and he gave him his first. Come on, we have a unique opportunity to do that right now. We've tried to make tithes and offerings as easy as possible for you guys in this season. So there's the QR code that you can follow. Um, EFT is obviously um, a very easy method. All the details are there. I just want to remind you guys before we go into the sermon, uh, our WhatsApp number is going to come up on the screen now. You can use that WhatsApp number if you need prayer. You can use it if you want to connect um, with us to get onto growth track or if you are looking for a view group and then guys do not forget this is a double dip Sunday we've got Mosa Webster from Rivers Church Durban North preaching tonight she is a fireball she I uh, love hearing from the ladies it's gonna be amazing double dip share the service um, it's gonna bless your world Hey there Church, I trust that you enjoyed the worship. Uh, we're so pumped that you could join us in the service. Um, and you can tell that I'm at a phenomenal venue. I'm in Bloberg Strand. And, and we of course as View Church try to choose as many services where we have a great view. Um, if you're joining us for the first time, we'd love for you to stay off the service. We're going to be in our virtual Next Step Lounge. We'll be live as we end the service. And you can use our WhatsApp number to take a next step. So join us there. And of course, if you haven't shared the service, why don't you do that right now? In this unique season, evangelism is spelt S-H-A-R-E, share. So I encourage you to be generous with your social media, generous with just sharing our services with your world. And if you want to serve in our services, a simple way is just to share our services. This year, we also are believing that it's going to, we're about to enter into a new season, so we're resetting. So we're going to be doing a fast as a church, so you'll be hearing more about that. Watch for details. We'll be emailing as well. Um, and we'll be telling you about our fast. We're going to be doing a seven-day fast. We are excited about it. Today, I really want to speak to anyone who's feeling disappointed or feeling delayed. Um, and really look at a couple in the Bible who experienced disappointment and delay. And how God taught them to get through it. And they saw amazing results. So, I'm trusting that this is going to help you. Um, I'm going to pray quickly. And why don't you open up in prayer with me. God, we just come to you now. 
we pray that you'd speak to us. I pray you remove any barrier that would get in the way of us receiving. And I pray that our hearts would be soft and we would, yeah, receive it openly, what you want to say to us in Jesus' name. Everyone believed it said, Amen. Listen, we want to encourage you to interact, Church Online, Facebook or YouTube. Write, um, if something stands out, write the point. If, if it's a point where you want to say amen, write it. Why don't you interact with us? We want to do life together in this season. So you might be feeling like your life has been settling down way too much. It's slowed down. You've been living in lockdown and, and you're feeling the frustration of it. Uh, maybe you used to believe for massive dreams and blessings, but, but you keep pointing to what we're experiencing right now to a delay or maybe a, a great loss, a loss of finances, a loss of relationships because you've been isolated. Um, but but I can imagine a lot of people are feeling that way. Maybe you're a young lady or and you've been exper- you've been waiting to meet that man and you even had a list. You, you, had, you had this list of what kind of guy he was, maybe a sporty. He said one day he'll be a great dad. Um, he'd be um, somebody that goes and walks on the beach or uh, may, hopefully he'd be a guy who supports Liverpool. Uh, But at this point, five years later, you haven't met anyone. You pretty much have just sort of taken the list down to um, uh, it needs to be a man, uh, he needs to be alive, and a job would be be pretty cool. But but you've just lowered your expectation. Maybe you you started a business. You said this business is going to build God's kingdom. um, It's going to give God glory, and it's going to bless so many other people. And now your business is just at a point where you're going, I just want this business to help me pay the rent. Uh, Or maybe you've got children and you've had this dream as a family. You said, you know, we're going to have this amazing family life. I'm going to read stories to my kids every night. Um, It's going to be great. Now you're just praying, God, help me not to kill my my children during lockdown. Um, So so we have these dreams and then delay and and hard times makes us lower our expectations. Um, So this message is for anyone who's maybe lowered their expectation. The couple I'm going to look at is a couple named Abraham and Sarah. Um, they, of course, were hurting and they wanted a child. And I can imagine everyone around them was falling pregnant and they went through years of seeing other families grow, but then their, their family never grew in the way they wanted it to grow. Then in Genesis 12, 1 to 2, God speaks to them. The Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to a land I will show you. I'll make you into a great nation and I'll bless you and I'll make your name great and you will be a blessing. They must have thought, wow, there it is. We've been waiting for so many years to have a family. And God said, we will build. We will be part of building a great nation. So so we're not only going to be parents. There's no doubt we're going to be grandparents. And and, and then as they heard this, it would have been a joy. And they would have left their home. And they would have followed God. They would have trusted God in this season. They go out from their family, from their homeland into a foreign land. Not actually knowing fully where they're going to end up. But they go in obedience. But nothing happens. They don't have any children. Months go by. Years go by. And nothing happens. And, and Abraham's feeling despondent and so is Sarah. And then we see Genesis 15. Of course, it's only three chapters on. But it's actually quite a big space of time. And God says this to Abraham. Do not be afraid, Abraham, for I'll protect you. Your reward will be great. But Abraham replied, O sovereign Lord, What good are all your blessings when I don't even have a son? I don't know if you saw what happened there. In in Genesis 12, God said you'll be the father of nations. Um, And in Genesis 15, Abraham said, yeah, but I don't even have a son. He felt so despondent. He couldn't see the nations that God was seeing. He could only see the lack of a son. And this year, I get it. That's a real problem and that's a real lack. See, what we don't realize is Genesis 12 to Genesis 15 was over 10 years. We don't know the exact time, but we know it was over 10 years. It would have been 120 months. Uh, It's 120 disappointments. Come on, we've had maybe three months, four months of disappointment right now where we're going, when's this going to end? When's this virus going to slow down? When are we going to start living a bit differently again? Uh, They experienced over 120 months. They've been trusting for breakthrough. They'd seen nothing. Maybe you've been trusting for breakthrough. Maybe you've been praying for breakthrough in your business. You've seen nothing. Maybe you've been praying for a family member to get saved and it hasn't happened. And you're going, God, did you forget me? Did I hear right? Was that even a real experience? Was I just at a great church experience and in worship and, and uh, I was hearing myself in a way, just a dream? Or did I actually hear you speak to me? So when God puts promises into our life, we think addition, but God thinks multiplication. Um, 
when God spoke to mankind, He said, be fruitful and multiply. He didn't say be fruitful and add. If you look at the, the parable of the farmer sowing seed, um, in Matthew 13 verse 8, it speaks about the seed falling on different soils. It says in verse 8, still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop 160 or 30 times what was sown. Again, I don't see addition here. I see multiplication. I see what God has called us to. So you and I have no idea what a single seed of faith can produce. Come on, do you believe that? Can I get an amen online that, that God can actually take a seed and multiply it? See, God is working on the rain, He's working on the sun, and, and He's working on the roots that you can't see under the ground. You know, in this season, I've seen rain, I've seen some sun, we've got some amazing sun today. God's still doing His part. I want to ask you, are you doing your part? If God's part is the rain and the sun and the seasons that, that show us He's faithful, then our part is sowing the seed. Our part is being faithful with the seed God has put in our hands. So before we see anything happening, before we see any fruit, we must remember that God is working on the roots. He's using the sun, He's using the rain, but He's growing some roots. And if the roots are right, then multiplication is assured. And God wants to be working on things other people can't see right now. Listen, we're in lockdown, a lot of people can't see us. But how's it going with God? How's God working in your life? Are you open to what He's doing? The, the, the things that are underground that are going to end up producing a great harvest? So you know what happens? Um, Abraham is sad. He hasn't seen anything. He's despondent. And in Genesis 15 verse 5, Abraham is sitting in a tent telling God what he can't see. If you think about it, it's pretty obvious. When you're in a tent, there's not a lot you can see. How big are the tents? They might have been a decent size, but you're still limited. There's a tent covering over you. So God then says to Abraham in verse 5, then he says, he, the Lord took Abraham outside. And of course, it's Abraham before God changed his name to Abraham, father of many nations. The, the Lord takes Abraham out of his limited context and he ends up taking him outside. I'm hoping today I get to take you outside, just like we are outside. Um, that you actually see the unlimited potential, that you actually see the heavens, that you don't just see your house or your limitations, that you actually see that our God is still faithful and that He can do wonders with the seed of faith. See, Abraham had the same problem as we have. We have limited perspective. Um, the Apostle Paul actually compared this life to living in a tent. You and I are living in a tent and God would like to take us out of the tent so we can see all that He wants to do. But we need to be obedient to follow Him. When you follow God, you're always going to follow Him in a way out of a tent. You're going to follow Him out of your limitations. You're going to follow Him out of your limited perspective. And you're going to see what He sees. I've had it in worship. I spend time in worship. It's like my eyes are open and I start to dream beyond my limitations. I read the Word and my faith rises up and I start to dream beyond my limitations. Um, I get into a view group or I start serving and, and I link hands with others. My reach goes further than it can go by myself. And I start, I start to live beyond my limitations. Whenever you live for God, whenever you follow God, you will always come out of the tent life and you'll start to live the heaven life. You'll start to see further. But, but you might say, I don't see any breakthrough, Andre. I don't see my business breaking through. I'm not, I have not married yet. I don't see any prospects. Um, I'm in debt. I don't see how to get out of it. Um, I just don't have any good report. Well, well I want to encourage you with this, that God has never promised to meet our expectations, but He has promised to exceed them. Can I get an amen? Ephesians 3 verse 20 says, Now to Him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works within us. He's promised to exceed our expectations. He's promised to take us out of the tent life. He's promised to help us look at the heavens and get a different perspective on life. And, and when we look up and get a new perspective, then when we look down, we can change our world. We can be a blessing to our world. I think as God took Abraham out the tent, he would have mentioned what Isaiah 55 verse 9 says, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. So he would have taken him out of the tent and made him look at the heavens. Can you imagine there, there are no lights there, how many stars he would have seen? 
and he would have no ability to count the stars because God said, count the stars. This is how much your descendants will be. He's trying to say, you have no ability to even count what I'm about to do. You have no ability to see what I'm about to do with your life. Your job isn't to try to figure out what I'm going to do. Your job is to just be obedient. And because my ways are higher than yours um, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. He would have been stunned, I reckon. Um, he would have probably said, I'm so sorry, God. I've always thought addition when you were thinking multiplication. I was thinking a son when you were thinking a nation. I was thinking of my child when you were thinking of your children, all the children on the planet. Here's what's crazy. If you follow Christ, then you're one of those stars that God pointed out. Galatians 3 verse 29 says, If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. God was thinking of us. He was thinking so much further. And right now, you might be thinking of you. And I get it. But God is thinking so much further. Not because He doesn't think of you. Because He's got great plans for you. Plans to prosper you. Not to harm you. To give you a hope and a future. And the same for your kids. Do you believe it? Can I get an amen online? Like God is thinking so big. So God's got amazing plans for you. Um, he wants to do more than you can hope, dream, or imagine. How do you practically start moving again? Get out of your tent and start to look to where, up to where your help comes from. Well, here's some practical ways. Number one, remove the obstacles. I think we're all facing obstacles. I'm going to read this verse and then tell you how you can remove obstacles. Matthew 17 verse 20 says, Jesus told them, I tell you the truth. If you had faith, even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it would move. Nothing would be impossible. How do you move mountains? You move them by faith. You say, Andre, I, I don't know how to do that. You just keep living by faith. Leanne and I are always moving the mountains when it comes to finances. You say, how? We honor God with our tithe. We do it by faith. You know what I mean? We go... The scripture says he'll rebuke the devourer. If he can remove a mountain, he can remove the devil from our finances. So I do it by faith. My faith moves mountains. You know how I move mountains in my life to become more like Jesus? I just keep serving. I've done growth track. I've discovered my gifts. I, I just keep showing up. I share services. I share four a week. I do it. I, I'm present. Yes, I, I'm the pastor here. But I still want to be a servant. As I serve and sow that seed of faith with service, mountains are move. You know, how do I carry on moving mountains? I, I'm generous through salt. I'm generous to others. Above my honoring to God, I'm, I'm generous. I just keep sowing seeds of faith. I keep showing up. Every morning I sow a seed of faith. The first thing I do is I read my Bible. It's a seed of faith. I, I read it in faith. You know what happens? Mountains are moved. Because it says, if you have say, faith the size of my seeds, mountains, you can say this mountain, there are obstacles in my mind that are removed when I spend time in God's Word. Um, there are obstacles in my heart that are removed when I spend time in God's Word. He can give me a soft heart. When, when I feel limited and I live the tent life, I start to worship God and lift Him up. And by faith, the obstacles removed, the tent life's removed, and God starts to give me a heaven's perspective. You remove them as you live by faith. In this season, you might have a reason. Well, Andre, uh, what's the reason for being at church and, and your oh, heart's just online and I'm... You know, my time, you know, it's reasonable that I don't always, if you're living by reason, you're not going to move any mountains. People are, can, can say, this is my reasonable time and this is my reasonable offering and it's reasonable for me to serve in this way. Don't do it by reason. Do it by faith. Serve by faith. Show up by faith. Be in church by faith. And you know what? You get to move mountains. Even as I've sowed my life into the next generation into a youth pastor, I did it to remove the mountains for my children that they one day would also be part of a great youth. Now, they, I've done it by faith. Faith moves mountains. Number one, remove the barriers. Number two, don't make earth your home. Paul said, this earth's a tent. God was saying to him, get out of the tent. Abraham, don't make earth your home. Look at the heavens. Your destiny is wrapped up in heaven's plan. Look at the heavens, count the stars, I can't. While heaven's plans for you are so much bigger than earth's plans, earth's limitations can never stop what heaven has already decided. Keep looking to heaven, don't make earth your home. Hebrews 11, 9 to 10. By faith he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. This is Abraham. He lived in tents. See, he, 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 he didn't build brick and mortar because that wasn't really where he was destined to live forever. 
as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him to the same promise. So the same promise, but they, they always looked further ahead. For he was looking forward to a city with foundations whose architect and builder is God. He decided heaven is my home. If heaven's your home, then you're not going to be limited by what we're experiencing right now. You're just going to see the opportunity to be a blessing because you're not trying to get everything out of life, but you are trying to give to this life because you're destined for heaven. Third thing and last thing, live with an eternal perspective. Hebrews 11 verse 12. And so from this one man uh, who was as good as dead came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sands on the seashore. What I want to point out is when you got heaven's perspective, you know even death can't hold you down. <laughs> this man was as good as dead, but God brought nations out of him. God is not intimidated by what the world says is dead. God is not intimidated by what the world says has come to an end. God has got resurrection power. When we live for heaven, when we live with the eternal mindset, we're not scared of what earth throws at us. We're excited because we are destined for heaven. Earth has lost its thing. Death has lost its thing. Heaven is our reward. See, if this message has blessed you, please write it down on Church Online. Interact with us. If there's something that stood out, tell us. Um, and if, yeah, if God's really blessed you or touched you or encouraged you, why don't you tell us what your next step is? But even as you had this opportunity to sow a seed of faith, the seed that is not sown is the one that's ineffective. It's unfruitful. It's the one that you preserve. Even as you might be trying to preserve your life now, God's called you to sow your life. Um, it might be scary as you sow it in this season, being present, sowing it at church or reading your Bible. But as you sow it, God can do the miraculous. Mountains can be moved, but you need to let go of it. The only way I can assure you of a future is in the seed you sow today. The only way Abraham and Sarah could receive the inheritance was to sow a seed. They had to trust and obey. Abraham even got asked to offer, um, to offer Isaac later on as a sacrifice. He just walked to the mountain to sacrifice him, but God stopped him. He had learned that, that he could trust and obey. That was his role. The older he got, he would be in the room and he'd tell us, just trust and obey as you do it. These seeds that you'll sow, they're going to blow your mind. The miraculous is going to happen in your life. But, but it's the seed you don't sow that you're not going to see a victory in. It's the prayers you don't pray today that aren't going to be answered. In a way, it sounds like a bit of a joke, but it's the services you don't share online that your family and friends won't watch. See, everything we do right now is an opportunity. I don't know if you see it. We can sow a seed online. We can sow a seed in the way we serve. We can sow our, ourselves into the Word. But this is an awesome opportunity to keep growing, to lift our eyes to where our help comes from. You see, if you're watching and you're not even in a relationship with Jesus and you feel totally hopeless, I want to invite you to accept the hope of the world, Jesus Christ, the one who paid the price for your sins. I want to give you an opportunity to do what I did. Uh, what I did was I actually heard the gospel. I heard that Jesus was the Son of God, that He died for me on the cross that he paid the price for my sins and when I heard it I knew that I wanted him in my life so what I did was I actually opened up my heart I remember walking home and I went to my room and I just said Jesus will you save me will you come into my life and will you start to lead my life and you know what he did it I was scared I, I, I thought I don't know if I'm gonna disappoint him but I also found that as I received him he also, I also received his backing his power he gave me the Holy Spirit and he's helped me to live out what God's called me to. I'm not perfect, but I've got a perfect Savior. If you want a perfect Savior in your life, you want your sins forgiven, if you want to also spend eternity in heaven, why don't you right now pray this prayer with me and, and I'm going to ask you to open up your heart, close your eyes. Here we go. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for paying the price for my sins. Today, I want to ask you to forgive me of all my sins and I want to receive you as my Savior. Will you lead me? Will you guide me? And will you strengthen me to do all that you've called me to do? In Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome. Come on, if you prayed that prayer, we're so happy for you. Come on, if, if you're watching and you have a friend or family member prayed that prayer, or, or yeah, if you just want to celebrate them, why don't you celebrate? Clap some hands. I know heaven celebrates even when one person makes a decision. Listen, we want to encourage you to tell us you made that decision. We've got a WhatsApp number. Why don't you WhatsApp us and say, I just gave my life to Jesus. It's a, uh, nobody else is going to see that WhatsApp. If you want to tell us 
Church Online, Facebook or YouTube, why don't you tell us right now? Uh, but we want to celebrate you and, and we want to congratulate you. Uh, and we also want to encourage you to take a next step. Stay online to connect around Growth Track and View Groups. Have a blessed Sunday. Don't miss tonight. Mosa Webster will be preaching. She's going to blow your mind. 6 p.m. live. See you then.